wasn't hard, was it? Um, now what I'm going to do is you've got these three devices all sat there on uh, on the same mesh network. Um, one of them is connected to our LAN, but obviously that one could actually be connected to the internet, uh, as, as, as norm normally you're going to do with it. And uh, wireless clients can now connect to any of these three APs, um, and obviously through them access access the internet. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to set up the NMS, Network Management System. Rather glorious title, but essentially it's a piece of software that allows you to actually um, do a layout of the units and look at link strength and number of clients connected and that sort of thing. Now the uh, essence of an MNS system is there will be a server somewhere, i.e. a Windows PC, and it's running the NMS software, which comes free from Ingenious or including the price from Ingenious. You don't have to pay anything extra for it. And uh, you install that and run that on your server, PC, whatever. And what you have to do is you have to tell the nodes what the address is of the service. You have to tell them where to send the information from. So if we go to that, and what we're going to do is going to do put in the address of this computer as the one I'm going to run the NMS on, 192.168.0209. I'm going to apply that. So that one's done. Then I'm going to go to 231 and I'm going to go down to NMS address and I'm going to change it. You can see I've been playing around with it before. Let's change that to 209. Yet again, this PC here. And then I'm going to go 232 and look at the NMS address and set that to the address of this PC here as well. So now all three of these nodes are going to send their management software information to our server. This is this PC here. So now what we have to do is we have to um, uh, install and run the NMS software. Now you can download the NMS software from our website. And after it's installed, it does a menu item, uh, Ingenious Mesh Tools. And it's the Ingenious Mesh Network Management Tool program that you want to run. So you download it from our website and install it. No rocket science there. Quite a chunky program, though. Eventually, okay. Let's make this a bit bigger. Right. Now, what we have to do is now the NMS software is actually a multi-product uh, piece of software. It's actually designed. Um, uh, the same package can actually run uh, NMS application for a number of different ingenious meshing products, um, including a layer three meshing product, a dual radio layer two meshing product, and also the single radio light meshing products. Now, what that means is there is a lot on here, which, to be honest, are not applicable to this light meshing product. We're only going to use a small part of what this software is capable of doing. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new map. Now the new map, as I say, you can do layer 3 map, layer 2 maps, but the only one that we're interested in here is what is called the easy map. And we're going to give it a name, I don't know, test uh, map, whatever. Click OK. So now it comes up with a map which by default just has a blue background. And if I click on uh, the run button here, Microsoft unblock. Okay. Um, now, look in the log down here. You can see it's found our three nodes straight away on the 230, 232, and 231 address. And by default, it just bangs them on top of each other in the top left hand corner. Okay. So you can see you've got the three units here, and um, the blue lines are actually showing the, the links between them. And if I click on this button here, what it will actually do is it'll give us some information of the link strengths, etc., etc. Okay, so um, here it is talking about the 231 device. The reason it's not doing them all in one go is because they don't all send an information at exactly the same time. There's time intervals between them all sending the information. <coughs> I think it's every 60 seconds or something like that. But as you can see here, this one 231 is telling the strengths talking to its neighbours. 
if you actually uh, hover your mouse over them it will actually give you the MAC address of the neighbor so this is 6D and this one is 65 so 60 and 65 you can see it's got quite a good RSSI to both of those clients and uh, now if I go and um, power up a notebook and here it is to give you more information so here it is actually giving you the data rates and the speeds um, connecting to these various interfaces now you notice that the 126F here, which is itself, just to confuse things, uh, it includes itself in the list and now you notice that we've given it another, another few seconds and it's now popped up with the meshing information and the link information from all of the different units now. Now 231 I've actually got here in this separate room so we've got walls in between so you can see that these two have got a good link to each other and we've got a weaker link to the one that's in the separate room and here you actually see it talking to um, each of the neighboring nodes uh, I don't know why it does that so look at that now what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go and stop it I'm just going to go now and actually turn on a notebook computer and associate a notebook computer to one of these nodes and you'll see that we should get some extra information here about the client link so I'll be back in a second okay back and done that and you notice there's a change now if you look at the 232 device um, under the SSID 36-3 remember those uh, those uh, I've set up three uh, different SSIDs for the AP side so we've got 36-3 36-1 36-2 so on this one it's now saying that we have a another client connected which is using channel 1 and it's connected at 54 50 or more leg and if you looked here under the 232 you can actually get an indication of the RSSID uh, signal strength showing the connectivity to 232 so um, you can use this tool and with a bit of uh, careful study you should be able to analyze the link performance and actually work out um, how well the link is performing um, you should be able to get an indication of uh, the str uh, clear, uh, strengths of the um, AP clients connecting to it so from that it'll give you an idea of working out um, where the congestion points are on your network and whether you need to add any more mesh nodes to try and ease out that connectivity issue now something else you can do with this uh, little application is you can actually load a background now I knew I should have sorted out something originally because I don't know if I can think of a suitable background but basically all you would normally do is you would um, no I don't think I've got a nice background I can put on here which is a bit of a shame uh, no. what you would normally do I suppose is you would go to uh, go to your Google Maps file new tab and uh, you would um, download a map of your place or your site where you're putting it in maybe but what I'll do here is I'll just nine pepper Quebec uh, nine pepper Bravo sorry okay uh, I'll try to find a Google map where did I even write Okay, so you can actually go to Google Maps and you can actually get a map of the area. Uh, satellite, that's what I want. Uh, let's zoom in a bit more. So uh, imagine this is not a picture of a boring industrial estate. Imagine this is an exciting picture of your, of your caravan park. So you'll be able to actually um, take the image straight from here and then uh, go back to your meshing unit or your NMS software and do file import background it would allow you to bring that image in I do wish I had one pre-saved because it would make it a little bit more uh, illustrative of what I mean but basically then you can import your image here and what it will basically do is it will put that image as a background on here that then enables you to actually obviously move these nodes onto the actual real position they are on the map 
which um, is a little bit better because it gives you an idea, uh, a graphical idea, geographical idea of exactly where units are and what they're doing. Um, and uh, what can I say? That's about it, really. Um, I hope I've shown you how easy it is to set these up. It really is an absolute piece of doddle. I mean, I've waffled through this and probably taken about five times longer than it really would because you can obviously set up um, a bunch of these to talk to each other in no time at all. Um, and what it does is the this product range now gives you a very quick, reasonably low cost way of actually doing a mesh solution. Um, obviously typical uh, applications this are you've got caravan parks, you've got marinas, you've got country parks, etc, etc. The indoor unit well, that surprise is also finding applications because there are applications where you need to put a number of nodes in an, in an indoor environment. Um, you almost certainly, uh, in some instances, are going to have to re resort to repeaters. And the beauty of using the mesh units is the ease and simplicity of the setup. They can basically bang the mesh units up inside within about, what, two or three minutes worth of configuration they're all up and running. It's not like WDS where you've got to start setting up MAC addresses and all this horrible sort of stuff or universal repeater where you've got to worry about SSIDs and all that sort of rubbish. If you have to worry about any of that, just tick that box called meshing, give them each a separate IP address and that is it. There really is very 